Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about widow and orphan records. I'm going to show you how to prevent orphaned records in your Microsoft Access databases. What's an orphaned record? Well, an orphaned record is if someone tries to type in a line item, for example, in an order without specifying the order ID, without giving it a customer and a description and all that other stuff that creates the order record. This way you've just got order details floating around out there without an order ID on them. Today's question comes from Elena in Seattle, Washington, one of my Platinum members. Elena says, I'm working with your Tech Help free template. Thank you, by the way. You're welcome. And I've noticed that it's possible for a user to enter order detail items without having first created an order. This causes them to be lost in limbo. How can I prevent this? Well, let me show you. Here's the free tech help template. You can download a copy of this off my website if you'd like to. There's a link down below the video. It's absolutely free. It's got a customer list with customer form. And on the customer form, there's an order form. Now, the way you're supposed to do it is you put a description in, right? Parts. And pick a customer. Okay? And then you can put in some items in here, right? Motherboard. One at 30 and so on. I've got a whole video on how this was built. Again, links are down below. However, it is possible if you come into orders and you're at a blank new order, okay, and you come down here and you just type in stuff, right, line items, without selecting stuff up here, notice this still says new. This means an order ID hasn't been generated yet. And because an order ID hasn't been generated, this line item has no order to attach itself to. If I move to a new record, okay, Stuff is in there, but if I close this, right, and go back in, there's, there's no stuff. All right, what happened? Well, let's take a look at the order detail table. All right, look at that. Okay, stuff has no order ID. It's blank. It's null. It hasn't been assigned yet. Okay, how do we fix that? Well, go into order detail ID in design view. All right, find the order ID. Now, right now, it's set to zero for a default value. Let's get rid of that. And let's set required to yes. What this means is we're going to start off with no value. It's going to start off null, but we're going to make it required, which means the user is not going to be able to enter in an order detail item unless it's got an order above it. All right, save this. Now it says data integrity rules have changed. Existing data may not be valid for the new rules. In other words, the data that you currently have in the table might not match your new rules. All right. It says it might take a long time, but we only got a, a handful of records, so just say yes. Say existing viol uh, existing data violates the new settings. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, go ahead. All right, because we've got data in here that doesn't match the new rules, so we have to delete that one. All right, how do you find those records if you got tons and tons of data in your database? Well, I've got another video that I did recently called Missing Data, how to find missing data. That's if you've got a relationship set up between two tables, like the order table and the order detail table, and you're missing data on one side of it. You have to create something called an outer joint. I'll put a link to that video down below in the link section too. It's called Missing Data. Okay, but now if I come into my customer form, all right, and I go to orders, and I go to add a new order, all right, if I come down here and start typing in a product, look what happens. You must enter a value in the order detail T order ID field, which means there's no order ID specified in here. Okay, and if I keep typing in, that's fine, it'll let me, but if I try to leave this record, I get that warning message again. And nothing that I do, I can't leave this record at all until it has a value. So you're gonna have to hit escape, come up here, pick a person, all right? Now it's generated an order ID. Now I can come down here and attach an item to it. So that is how you prevent what are called orphans. You simply make the related field in your subform, all right, on the many side, you got a one-to-many relationship. If you're not familiar with relationships, go watch my relationships video. All right, again, I'll put a link to that down below. Watch relationships. Okay, but orders to order details is a one-to-many relationship, right? One order to many details. You simply make the primary key for the order table, which is the foreign key in the order details table, you make that required. And that way you can't have orphaned records. It's just not allowed. The database won't allow it. Now, you can still create orphaned records if you delete 
the order. Right? If I delete this order for right now, I'm creating an orphaned record in there. It'll be a detail item without a parent. How do you prevent that? Well, there's a couple of ways you can. First of all, I strongly recommend in most cases you don't delete data. If this order is now invalid, make another field up here, right? Call it active or call it, you know, valid order or whatever you want to call it, but just check that as canceled, for example. All right, I've got another whole video on why you shouldn't delete data. Order data, customer data, all that stuff. Keep it in your database. Just mark it canceled. It's better. Trust me. All right, go watch that video too. It's called Don't Delete Data. But if you are going to delete data, let's say it's temp data and you don't really care about it, you can set up something called Cascade Deletes. It involves setting up referential integrity. All right, and then a Cascade Delete says if I delete the parent, it deletes all the children. That's dangerous. Because if you delete a customer, for example, it will delete everything related to that customer. I don't like doing this. I do have a video that shows you how to do it, though. It's called Cascade Deletes. Uh, again, I'll put a link down below if you want to go watch that. But I don't like doing that. One problem with Cascade Deletes is that you lose the ability to have referential integrity in databases with linked tables. So if you want, you can set up a manual way to delete the child records, for example, if you delete an order, delete the details, but you have to do it yourself manually with a little bit of EB code, or at least an action query. I will show that in an upcoming video. I haven't covered that yet. In my developer classes, I have showed how to copy an order, which involves copying all the details. That's in my developer, I think, 25 lesson. I'll put a link to that down below too. But I will cover deleting an order and deleting all of its children in a future video. Now, how do you go the opposite direction? We've covered preventing orphans, right? Orphans are detail items that have no parent. How do you prevent widows? What if you want to say, okay, you can't put an order in without items down here. I don't want any blank orders in my system. If you're going to put an order in the system, you have to have at least one item down here. That involves a little programming, and I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. Want to learn more? Well, in the free version... In the free video you just watched, I showed you how to prevent orphans where you've got records that are typed into the details section that are missing the parent. In the extended cut, I go the other way. Okay, If you want to make sure that you don't have orders that have no line items, right? if you want to make sure that each order has at least one line item on it. Now, this could be anything that has a one-to-many relationship, whether you're dealing with customers and contacts or, or vendors and products or whatever. All right, I use orders and order detail items because everyone can relate to this. Okay, but I've talked to a few people that have said, hey, what about, you know, I got this, I got a project and it has to have at least one, you know, subcontractor on it. I don't want them to save the project without a subcontractor. Okay, you'll have to use this technique. It involves a little bit of programming, a couple lines of code, not much. All right, we're going to use the on unload event check with a DLOOKUP to see that if there are any sub records, right, child records. And if not, say, hey, You've got to enter at least one item. Would you like to cancel the order in case they, they decide they don't want to do it? Otherwise, they won't be able to close the form. All right, that's all covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download this database. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. 
Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.